Hey, I'm Erin Gaffel for Isolation Art School. I live in Big Sur, California. I'm an oil painter. And I'm gonna offer up some lessons on painting the still life with what you have at home. We're gonna cover composition, color, color mixing. We'll look at values. I have a little value map I made here, um, taking you from light and dark into a wider range of values. And I'm gonna start off with doing a demo of just how I approach painting, jump in and um, paint without a net. But over the course of four weeks, I'll be offering some good structure and what you'll need to get started and um, some technique to strengthen your art skills. Working today on a, um, a still life of some home objects, a tangerine, a red apple, and a blue cobalt vase with some mint from the garden. And what I'm doing here is preparing my palette with mixtures of all the colors of the, of the objects that are going to be in my painting. Uh, the range from dark to light of my blue cobalt blue jar, the deep red to light red of my apple, the tangerine and the shadow side, and then some neutrals for the background and foreground, and some really happy mint green as well, which I'm working on. So I've got a prepared uh, canvas. It's actually a, a, a panel that I've painted, and I really love working on a, um, a really rich color. It's just my thing. So I um, have a prepared panel. It's ready to go, and I mix up a dark neutral. I'm using, I think, Prussian blue and burnt umber to make a mix, and then thinning it with terpenoid or odorless mineral spirits. And um, I'm using a round brush to dip into that mixture, and then I begin drawing and the uh, the drawing of the composition onto the board. And it's kind of a drawing, a painted drawing in a way, because I'm using a brush to do it. Um, but this is pretty pretty much the way I usually begin a painting um, with thin color in a fairly dark outline and the color of the color choice I generally try to create something that's really dark and fairly neutral a warm and a cool color coming together to make a sort of a just a dark neutral color but sometimes it's really fun to play around with with that choice too so it's it's not a it's not a it's not a rule you can really do whatever you feel like um, this is just something I happen to like because it gives me a nice intense shadow side and I work from dark to light. And when I get the drawing laid in like this, I kind of go back and I examine the roundness, the proportions. I've got a little and then a big and then a bigger object, one, two, three, all in a row. And they're breaking a cardinal rule of painting, which is they're all kissing each other. And I just felt like breaking that rule today and plopping these things down next to each other because their colors were so happy and I just felt like it. So this is kind of me just plopping in and starting up just the way I feel like it. I um, probably will work on a series of these paintings and that's my methodology of learning my way into how I want to compose a subject. I'll start any which way and then as I finish the first or second passes, I kind of get oh, I know what I need to do. And I make some adjustments and some changes. But if I don't make the first one, I don't necessarily know what I want to change. So what I'm doing right here technically is I'm going from the dark side to the light side. I started with the blue jar and now I'm working on the red apple. And I'm just moving in big chunks, looking at the shape of the color in the correct value. The value is that light to dark component. So the apple is red, but some of the apple is a really dark red, and some of the apple is a middle red, and some of the apple is a lighter red. So as I'm looking at the painting and then looking back at the objects themselves, I'm kind of thinking about not so much jar, apple, tangerine, but rather dark, light, middle, the shape, and the the hue, the color. Uh, the tangerine is orange, but it's sort of a yellowish orange in one section and a reddish orange in another section. Um, 
So those qualities of lightness, brightness, color, value are all things I'm sort of thinking about, um, much more so than I'm thinking about the names of the objects themselves. And at the end of the day, each brush stroke is really laying down a shape in a certain color and value. And if you've observed well, those shapes will add up to creating something that looks like it's supposed to look. So I've got these three objects painted um, in big, bold strokes and no fussing, no mussing, just really getting the big idea. Um, this is a painting I'm going to do in you know 20 minutes, so I don't really have time to be too fussy. What I'll do after I've finished my first or second painting is I'll prepare something that I may take a little more time to um, get into the nuance with. But this is the way I like to start, and it's a la prima painting, painting that's done all in one sitting. I'm using gloves to protect my hands from any toxicities that the oil paint may have. And I'm sitting next to an opened window, so there's some ventilation as well. And these are just sort of two um, good housekeeping practices when you're working with um, any kind of oil paints that have um, any odiferous properties or potential um, toxic properties. And they're, they're a good practice to get, in, get into the habit of, of, you know, employing. I buy these, um, these really thin gloves in boxes. And um, what's really nice about them is when I take them off, my hands are clean, which is kind of awesome. What I've done here now is I've mixed up a neutral color for the foreground that's um, mostly white. And then I've picked up a little bit of all the other colors, the red, the orange, the blue, the green, and introduced them in small proportions into the paint, which makes a really harmonious neutral color. And that's the quality, that quality of harmony. It's really important to me. Um, one of the things I've realized about what I want my paintings to offer people is a sense of beauty and peace and um, this domestic life that we're all living right now, uh, being home so much more, it's really a nice time to celebrate the beautiful things that our home has to offer. Even something as simple as a piece of fruit or a blue cobalt jar is something that is not necessarily valuable intrinsically, but offers us a value in its beauty, its color, its practical use. Um, just these objects that we live with in our home can really be so much more than um, just something to eat or to use, but to look, really look at and to use as a subject in art. I um, am working with a fairly big brush. I started with a half inch brush that was flat and I like that because it makes me think big and it makes me think about things in big chunks of shapes and colors, not little, little pieces. Um, and that helps me establish the big idea quickly. And the last thing I do is I go back into all of the objects and add highlights where they need to be. If the light is hitting an object and shining back, um, a little dot of light in the right place will really be the only true white in all of the painting and give a little bit more dimensionality to those forms. I'm going back into my shadow. And one of the things about painting is that you're constantly deciding and then re-deciding. So the first pass of the painting, I'm making a lot of decisions and each decision instructs me as to the next decision. And when the entire board or the entire canvas is covered with all those decisions, then I have this sense of what's happening um, with the feeling of the, of the painting and, that, and the decisions I've made. And I may decide to go back in and uh, lighten or darken, uh, neutralize or brighten an area. And the beautiful thing about oil paint is that you can continue to do that.
So that's the beginning of a painting. That's a 20 minute painting, a fast, quick, jump in a la prima painting. And our next lessons will explore color mixing, composition, and um, take us a little further into the creative process.